I really feel like you can see with the step cross, like with the Leaf 3, Sup Air have upped their game in terms of the whole construction. The actual finish and the design, you can see the glider's got more clean finish and the build and everything looks higher. Actually, when you first get it, I mean, it's, it's uh, supplied in the Sup Air compact case. Um, mm -hmm. Concertina bag, which is it's a very nice concertina bag. Still one of our favourites. It's <laughs> yeah. a really good concertina bag. If you like something that's really easy to use, it's very nice. Yeah, very easy to use. And you, you get a product pack as well, um, which yeah, it's got the sort of line diagrams and spare repair patches and things like that. So that that initial package out of the bag is is all all really good. All very nice. <laughs> So the, the risers are narrow risers and they are on the skinnier side, but actually I don't find them difficult. There are some skinny risers that would be that sort of seven mil, which you kind of think, well, this is a bit more of a fiddle and a faff, but actually they're really quite usable and easy. So uh, yeah, not complicated, easy to pick up and hold, um, good, very good quality, all, felt, all feels very nice to, to, to use and yeah, they look good. So when I first looked at them, I thought oh, they're going to be a bit fiddly to use, but it just shows you the way they're put together and just the way they're stitched and how they are just makes them easy to launch and play around with on the ground. The lines are fully unsheathed, except for the main brake lines. Yeah, on the ground, the inflation, really easy. The glider fills up really easily and builds a wall. It's very easy to manage didn't find it kind of like a real struggle to hold down even when it was more breezy all round i found it very very easy for the class i found it yeah very much on the easy side generally in light winds strong winds everything how about you uh, yeah if you give an overall uh, impression of the step cross then yeah you've got a high b glider uh, with the sort of overall general general really good performance um but with definitely the the ease of use so yeah um, easy to use on the ground, easy to inflate, and the, the handling is all nice and controllable. Gives you good feedback, but it's a bit more on the sort of reassuring side. Mm -hmm. It's quite a confidence-inspiring wing. Very, um, very much so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah confidence-inspiring. Mm -hmm. From a point of view of launching, it's a glider that very, very forgiving and easy to launch for the class. So if you're moving to a high B and looking for something that's not too demanding on the launching. Some other high bees are definitely quite a bit more demanding. Um, I think it might be, it's certainly one of the easiest. I mean, it even could be a contender for about the easiest for ground handling and launching in all conditions. I found that really nil wind and stronger wind, everything it is uh, very, very easy indeed. Yeah, uh, the light winds, nil winds. So I was doing forward launches and always came up very well, very, you know, confidently gave me confidence in the in those sorts of conditions, and then, like Carlo says, with the uh, stronger sort of winds as well, it, it doesn't have that tendency to snap you or pull you. It, it comes up, it gets cuts through the air nicely. It controls, it gives you that confidence and mm. its ease of use. And then straight away, I found that as soon as you're ground handling, even when it's gusty, it's kind of very pitch stable and solid and easy to control. It doesn't have a tendency to keep dropping back or wanting to keep overflying you or, or move around. It kind of just sits there, mm. planted above your head really easily. I mean, obviously you scram handle a bit, but uh, relatively speaking, it's very easy. So it has that reassuring feel mm. as you're in the air. So as you're lifting off, you can feel what's going on with the glider but you're reassured that it's solid mm -hmm. um, and then you get the lift and then yeah, gliding off. Even when it's really light wind and sometimes we almost we had a like tailwind or something like that and it's a wing that you can feel like confident to pull up and run off and that you you know the glider's going to come up really well and inflate, come straight above you and then as you run off you've got the confidence it's going to lift you off nice and easy and I think as we'll get into it a bit, the way, it's the way it's trimmed and the way it's set up is all prioritising ease of use and, um, and also being quite lifty and having a good glide. So that all helps, those all contribute and help to helping you lift off nicely from the takeoff easily. How was it launching in windy conditions? Again, not ever 
not ever sort of had the feeling of, oh, this is this is difficult, or I'm having to pull the glider or, or hold the glider back. So mm -hmm. again, the glider is giving me confidence in light winds and strong winds for, mm. for launching. It's, it's comfortable. Uh, yeah. So I think yeah. It's... I think yeah, exactly. I, when I launched it in stronger winds as well, um, I've flown the size ML and the M, and you've flown the small, haven't you? Yeah. That's it. So. And always, you just feel it's a glider you feel confident to launch. As long as the conditions are vaguely sensible, then it feels confident. And in strong conditions, because it comes up nicely, but it doesn't build up too much energy. And I think then it has a good trim speed as well. So you don't, it's not a glider you pull up in strong wind and then get blown back. It, it put, punches out and cuts out nicely. Um, so that gives you real confidence to launch, um, even when it's pretty strong. <laughs> It's not a sports car. Okay. <laughs> I think it has actually a very comfortable handling and I would say it's not a dynamic wing. It doesn't have mm -hmm. a lot of energy. So it's it's it feels good. It's 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 confidence inspiring. It it rolls nicely into into turns. Mm -hmm. Um but it, it doesn't have that sort of sporty feel to it. Mm -hmm. So actually so it is a high B wing, and you, you notice quite a few of the characteristics of the speed and performance, and, and it has a very good sync rate. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, you don't have that sort of edgy, sporty kind of feeling with it. Mm -hmm. So very nice for pilots who want that little bit more reassurance and, and comfortable flying. So Yeah, I mean... I agree. I mean, it depends on where you're in the weight range as well. So I think you were flying, you were flying the glider around the middle of the weight range. But I do, gen I do agree with you. The thing about it is that, and it doesn't, yeah, you're right. It doesn't build up lots of energy. That's it. it doesn't, some gliders, you, if you, when you do turns, they build up a lot of energy. And the, um, yeah, the step cross tends to just to stay calm and smooth things out. Mm. But at the same time, um, that would kind of make you think, oh, well, you can't turn very well on it. But actually, it turns really well. You can. I found myself out turning other pilots quite a few times, um, and you know it's certainly able to turn nice and tight. It's not the the most agile and nimble. It's definitely on the calm and smooth and easy side. Mm. Um, but it's it's not. It's definitely not a bus. It's not sort of like so. It's actually got very pleasant handling. I can think of a couple of days where I've flown the glider when it has been, or pilots have commented that it's been quite choppy and the air hasn't been mm. quite so nice and we've had mixing sort of air and I've kind of gone well oh, yeah I mm. kind of noticed that but actually the step cross was smoothing that out for mm. me so it was giving me um, a, a smoother ride generally working the stronger climbs working the the lighter climbs mm. it really it's, it's got a lovely climb rate it turns very flatly it climbs really well this is a glider you're going to you're going to climb nicely up to the top of the stack um, with, and it's, it's for pilots who are like flying around locally and going cross country, but particularly getting up in the weaker stuff, it does really well at that. It's got a good glide and uh, and a very good sink and climb rate, so it does it does really well in those conditions. But like you say in Colombia, when you're flying in stronger stuff, it handled that really well as well. Yeah. One point about the step cross is that I found that it was it's very pitch stable. When you go into a really strong climb, because it's it's kind of made to be pitch stable and not aggressive and not push forward, I felt like there's a little, a slight delay compared to some wings, like um, the Climber 3P and the, um, the Climber 3, and the Rush 6 have a slightly more kind of aggressive kind of sort of cut to them. They kind of bite in a bit more. It's only just a slight thing. But actually, that makes it. That's part of what makes it so feel comfortable and, and reassuring. I think. But it didn't. It's not what I want to say. Is that it didn't. Some gliders then start of go thunk back, and you're kind of like wait for it to come forwards. And it's not like that. It's it was really coming very nicely, just making it very easy. It's not a glider that requires lots of active piloting to keep it inflated. It's very collapse resistant. Yeah, it's not pulling you around. It's not twitching. It's not. Um... Did you have any collapses? No. No, no. Well, I, I think no. all all fairly all fairly calm on that front. <laughs> yeah. My feeling is that trim, 
it's it's got a good trim speed and feels good for the class. I think generally the speed is, is good and then I, I sort of I feel like in comparison to other pilots I've still I've got good performance, mm -hmm. good glide. Yeah I agree I, at trim what I felt was I actually got to fly with a good few other pilots. I noticed that when we were gliding at trim the trim speed and the glide are very good and they're definitely competitive in the high B class. Then what about accelerated? Well, certainly a very easy to use speed oh, yeah. system. <laughs> so mm. um, actually on the on the lighter side, I would say with mm. the, the, the pressure. So um, yeah, glides glides on with the bar. So a very mm. sort of usable, friendly speed bar uh, option. And it, it's, it's adding on a good amount of speed, but it's not the fastest. Mm. Um, and fine for where it is. So we're talking, it's a high B, um, it's steady, you've got that good performance and you, you've got a good glide anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and the, but the speed bar will give you, and will give you a, a bit more, um, but it's not the fastest. I agree with that. Yeah, so for my, for my testing, it, they, the speed bar, seem, they seem to have prioritized it being very usable. The glider is super stable, keeps very clean very very clean the whole there's hardly any dimpling and there's no flutter on the glider at all it's really keeps a really good glider and, it, and it's still efficient and the glide keeps well but um, for my testing the trim speed isn't particularly high in the high B class um, it's similar to some other gliders that are at the kind of safer end the easier end of the high high B class so it's, and I think I mean Whenever I measure these, it's like you just watch the speed going up, down, up, down. But um, I think it was about 12 to 14 kilometers an hour over trim, something like that. Probably more around 12, to be honest. So it doesn't pick up, um, a, you know, its top speed is not super high, but it's very usable. I think it's more usable than some other gliders that go faster. So, so but, but for sure, pilots who are wanting to use the bar and thinking that top speed is a priority, then I think the step cross doesn't have quite as good top speed. What I do like about the risers is that uh, it has the, I'd say, signature super um, handle on the back, on the back row. Little sticks. Little sticks. And um, they're very comfortable to use, but it, it doesn't have the BC bridge. Um, mm. So using the, the sticks is not so efficient as using the, the BC handles. Um, mm -hmm. what, what do you think? Yeah, so, well, surprisingly nowadays for a high B wing, one thing we're quite surprised to see with a step cross is, yeah, it doesn't have that BC bridge mm. system. So there isn't a connection system. And um, Supair tried it with the BC bridge and without it, and then they decided to, to not put the BC bridge on there. Um, and what I found from, from testing it, that does mean that if you're somebody that's using, going on speed bar and full bar a lot, and then you're working the rear risers a lot you can without that bc bridge system it does put a crease along the glider which just will make it a bit less efficient but you can still fly with them so what i was finding was that you can still fly within a certain range of movement you can still act just as effectively as without the bc bridge in my opinion i found that within a, a certain small range of movement you can still fly actively and you can adjust the the trim of the glider a little bit if you just pull, it's only when you pull down a lot, that's when, um, that's when you get the crease across the wing and that isn't so efficient. You can still do it, but it's just not quite as efficient. So instead you'll be working the speed bar, you know, a bit more old style-y, <laughs> working the speed bar a bit more. And of course that works just fine. Um, but yeah, the point is, and with those sticks, that makes it easy to put your hands somewhere and work the rear eyes just like that. So. Um. Big ears. <laughs> um, well, uh, light, my gosh. I think when I first mm. put the big ears in, I was kind of in they go and very light to hold. So surprising because the glider is very solid and collapse yes. resistant. So, you, uh, yes, in fact, and, and, and you think that it's going to be one of those gliders where you pull in the big ears and then you've got to really fight and hold it and it's you're having to use your strength and all of that and but no um it's just light <laughs> so yeah in they come nice and easily um i think i'm uh, playing around i mean i uh definitely there's a sweet spot where uh it just comes in and then just sits mm -hmm. and i've tried it a couple of times and sometimes uh if you didn't quite pull it into the right spot you then get maybe a little bit of um 
a, a, a sort of flap it, mm -hmm. it wasn't quite sitting but then I just adjusted it and pulled in a little bit more and then they just sit mm -hmm. um, and so yeah light easy to hold easy to put in effective and then with speed bar as well uh, all mm -hmm. good um, they they pop out um, all by themselves um, so mm -hmm. yeah super easy from that point of view super easy very forgiving very easy to control um, going into the spiral because of that sort of calm nature of the glider it's definitely not a glider that winds in um, but that if you want to um, I did try sort of being more aggressive with it and you can get it to go into a nose down spiral quite quickly if you want to if you really want to or need to um, but overall I'd say it's on the very easy side on the spiral dive and nice to go in nice and controllable nice to come out of course as usual with spiral dives you pull quite high G's the wing overs are very calm again and they you can and the glider because it's really nice and solid and it's got that nice turn um, so it does very nice and sort of elegant wing overs, but it's again, it's not a glider that really builds up energy. Elegant, what's a nice word? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, it's sort of elegant <laughs> to it. I think that's, that's a good word it's, for the step cross. It is, isn't it? It's yeah. a very elegant glider to launch yeah. and fly, and doing wing overs, it's kind of elegant. It's kind of elegant swellegant. Of course, you can get them a big if you really want to, but um, generally, I'd say it's kind of a, on the sort of you know, not super energetic kind of wing overs, but very nice and elegant. Elegant and comfortable. If you're somebody that's like really wants a wang over kind of, you know, super energetic kind of energetic kind of glider, this isn't it. Well, I did do quite a few collapses on the step cross, um, and uh, it's very well behaved. You can you can sense then more that it's more like a high B than a, a low or mid B. So in the, in the collapses, especially accelerated, there are much more demanding high B gliders out there uh, in SIV and stuff like that, particularly in the collapses area. But I do think it is there, that's where it's like a little bit of a step up from a, a mid B and you have got a high B wing. It's not um, a bit more of that performance as well. You can feel it, you know it, and yeah, it, it tells you what's going on. I totally agree. I think it's one of the things you've got going on is when you think, what's it like? It's because it's something you don't have to think about because it's just, I think another word about the step cross is it's really intuitive. It's a very easy, intuitive glider. You can just fly it right away and it's very easy and intuitive to fly. And again, that goes into the stall point. I found it's really obvious, builds up nicely, but it doesn't get really heavy. It does build up to make it very obvious. There's a good warning before the stall happens. It does build up. Um, yeah, the brake pressure, and then there's a point where you can feel it quite obviously going into that hovery, you know, the slippy slidey bit where you feel like, ooh, it's like you're on ice or something, you're just sliding about. And so it gives you plenty of warning and you, it starts to drop back and you can put your hands up and then it, again, it's got that very calm nature, so it just nods forward and flies off. Same on the spin as well, I tried just from hands up, burying the brake hard and holding it to point of spin and um, very clear spin point. One time I did do it a little bit over enthusiastically and I just really buried, I had slowed down and buried the brake and managed to fully spin the glider and again I could feel it really go and I put my hands up and it just dived out and, and flew out. Sometimes from an exit from a spin that's where you can end up with a cravat or something like that but it was so well behaved it was really easy. So, very good. Totally good point. I don't think we have covered that. So the brake travel, I think to remember the contact point is, it's not super short and it's not super long. Mm. And um, when you put it down to the contact point, it's kind of the 10 centimeter normal thing that, that pulls a nice contact. And then I think the, the brakes are generally moderate pressure. Yeah. And, and the response is, it's not like a super quick, agile, responsive glider, but it's not sluggish either. Mm. It's that moderate in, nicely in the middle kind of way um, and then I found the best brake position was definitely to do the hands through and do a classic half wrap. I think when you compare it to other high B wings I think the step cross to me seems like it climbs exceptionally well so it's a really good climber very good climb very good glide but it hasn't got the top speed and but it keeps a really good glide at full speed 
pilot demands are relatively at the lower end of the high B, so it's less demanding than pretty much all of the competition, actually. But um, yeah, it's definitely at the lower end and a very, very comfortable all round, yeah. all round high B glider. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> negatives, what are the negatives? Well, we spoke about the, the sticks versus BC bridge. So, so it doesn't have, that's, it hasn't got a BC that's bridge. That's going to be a personal preference. Other than that, um, it's yeah. It's the top speed. Yeah, if you're wanting to have that top top speed mm -hmm. or out and out performance in the high B, then this is maybe not the one for you. It's a, yeah, a couple of wings that have got a bit of an edge there. The Nivea Arcuma 3 and the... Um, Ozone Rush 6, the Phi Maestro 2 are just the ones that are coming to my mind right now. A pilot that's been flying um, a low B or a mid B, but it's got a good amount of air time and, mm -hmm. and looking to progress and, and you know wants to get into the high B. A pilot that doesn't want too much sportiness or too mm -hmm. much feedback, wants something that's a little bit more comfortable and easy. Yeah. Absolutely, couldn't, yeah, I could not agree more. Yeah, I think that's the main pilot group that's going to be interesting. Then also there's um, pilots who, who are flying high Bs and maybe finding their high B a bit too sporty. If you, yeah. want to, if you wanted to keep a very good climb rate and sink rate, mm. but you've been finding your high B or your C-class glider a bit, like, a bit much and a bit sportiness, it, when the conditions get sporty and it's like putting you off, taking off and flying, and you want a more comfortable ride, then the step cross is a fantastic choice Yeah, as well. and you're going to have a lot of fun with it. It's, it's a great glider and, mm. yeah, a, just really performs performs well. You know, it's yeah. going to give you what you want uh, on those nice days and you can have pleasure flying it. The other thing about it, of course, it's semi-light construction, so it's for pilots who are looking for something that's not super lightweight or super sort of heavyweight. Actually packing away the glider and oh. putting it... Um, Putting it into your kit, I mean, the, the compact case I love anyway, it's really easy to use and it's got an extra compression so you can have it um, sort of softly packed uh, and it's still a good volume, good size, etc. Not, not bulky, but then you can also then do the extra zip which then compresses it more and you've got, uh, you know, uh, the overall weight and volume and everything then is, is really lovely. And it's a really good all-rounder um, because it climbs really well and does really well in weak conditions but it also does well in the strong conditions and it's very calm and uh, stuff. It's a, it's a great glider for flying in all, all conditions yeah. really. It's a really good all-rounder. It might not have the out-and-out -out top performance in the high V class um, but it does have a very good all-round yeah yeah a really enjoyable yeah and very yeah. fun and enjoyable so if your priorities on just enjoying your flying and and enjoying making use of soaring and thermals and that you're not really worried whether you're one that's just flying three kilometers more or something like that um uh, then that the step cross i think is a great is a great option yeah well, that's all for our review of the Super Step Cross. As always, uh, go to our website, check out. We've got, obviously, the Step Cross and all the other high B gliders in there. We also have used gear. So once, when we finish testing the Step Cross, we'll be uh, putting those into our use section. So they'll come up, so you'll have an opportunity to buy some nearly new gliders. But if you want some more specific advice for you, then take a look at our match service and we'd love to help you. Yeah, if you're not... If you're not sure about which is the right glider for you and which is the right size, things like that, that's exactly what our map service is for. So have a look on our website for more information about that. That's it. It's now time we've missed lunch, <laughs> we've missed coffee, we've missed chocolate. So we're finished, we're done. This is it. Over and out.